now let's focus in on your military service. Yeah, you know, I never thought I'd be in the military, mm -hmm. to be completely honest. My father never talked about being a veteran. Okay. When I went to the recruiter, the recruiter said, who in your family was in the military? I said, my uncle, who, who was in the right. Air Force. <laughs> like, I didn't even think about my father. Right. Um, but it worked out really well because I took advanced classes in high schools, mm -hmm. advanced physics and advanced calculus. Didn't do too well, but I, I, I was in them. Um, so they allowed me in the Navy to take the nuclear power exam. Okay. Nuclear power program in the Navy is the most selective enlisted program there is. Only 2% of the Navy is nuclear qualified. Wow. And it's one of the toughest programs that they have. And I, I'm pretty sure I barely got the score <laughs> to get him in. Or my recruiter might have like, hey, let's get him one extra point to get, get him in. And it was just this amazing program. So I, in the nuclear power program, you have two choices. Okay. You can either be on aircraft carriers or you can be on submarines. So I went home to my father and I told him, I said, hey, dropped out again. <laughs> um, I'm joining the military, I'm yeah. joining the Navy, and um, I'm gonna be in their nuclear power program. Okay. And he and I said, I'm gonna be on aircraft carriers. Okay. And he said, why are you gonna be on aircraft carriers? He's an old salty seller, so that's how he talks. <laughs> and um, he was like, I was like, well, because, you know, there's there's females on aircraft carriers. Um, yeah. I heard there's McDonald's on aircraft carriers. <laughs> not true. Not true. Um, and, you know, I won't have to work as hard on an aircraft carrier than on a submarine. And he was like, no, you're going to be on submarines. Like, you're doing submarine duty. You're going to be part of the brotherhood. Because at the time, only males were allowed to be in the submarine service. Okay. Thankfully, they have opened that up. And now we have so many amazing sisters that are now part Talk of the it, fraternity yeah. and, and now we just branch it out and part of the family awesome. um so he's like yeah you're gonna do it and um i said all right dad whatever you say like this is gonna be what it is and i'll never forget getting on my very first submarine so i was on the submarine uss montpelier and we were traveling to halifax nova scotia okay. um in canada and it was rough sea states we're rocking back and forth um working my butt off to try to, you know, make an impression and, and show everybody that I'm the seller that they want me to be, right. um, be this go-getter. And I made a major mistake. And the captain, um, Captain Freak, um, a Philadelphia native as well, okay. um, he got on the intercom system and said, Petty Officer White made a major mistake. And until that mistake is fixed, Liberty is secured for everybody in a submarine when we hit Canada. So that meant nobody could leave the submarine until my mess up was fixed. Oh my God. And man, I walked around that submarine and the junior people were like bumping into me and <laughs> cursing me out and all these other things. But the coolest part about that was the senior leadership. Okay. The senior enlisted, the chiefs in the first classes, they went up to those junior guys and said, since the second Petty Officer White stepped on the submarine, He's been busting his butt. Oh, okay. He's been working. He's trying to learn. He's trying to be part of this team. Because, look, on a submarine, that idea of really depending on that person on your left and your right for your life mm -hmm. is true. I can imagine. Think about this. If you're out to sea on a submarine and you get a fire, you can't call the fire department. Right. You got to rely to the person on your left and your right with your actual life. So um, I took that seriously. And um, when I first got on, they said, if anybody messes with Petty Officer White, they got to deal with me. Mm. And that was like one of the first times that I learned what true servant leadership was okay. when I saw my leaders rally around me mm -hmm. in a situation where they didn't have to. Right. And um, they could have easily just thrown me to the wolves. Right. Um, so it kind of really fueled me for the rest of my Navy career. Um, 2003. We did Operation Iraqi Freedom on that submarine, and we were actually part of Shock and Awe. Wow. So we went over to the Gulf, and we shot over 20 Tomahawk missiles in support of the opening salvo, Shock and Awe. And um, it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life to be able to serve my country, to do something that very rarely happens, where you're shooting live Tomahawk yeah. missiles in support of those ground troops. And um, it taught me this idea that, that life is real. Yeah. You know, before it was kind of like we're out to sea, we're playing war games, we're doing these type of things. But, you know, what we're doing is really important to our country and, yeah. and for the world. And I, I embraced that. So from that, I wound up winning three Navy Achievement Medals hmm. um, in six years in the submarine force. And I wound up being named the Junior Cell of the Year for my submarine wow. before I left. Um, 
cool story with that is that I won that in 2004. Me and my now amazing, beautiful, outstanding, courageous, and stupendous wife were engaged. Right, okay, <laughs> so, okay. so she's right, girl, girl, girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And um, they come to Groton, Connecticut for that award c- okay. ceremony. And I bring my mother and my father up, who have been separated for decades at that point. Mm-hmm. And they were together, and it was the first time like I could see that smile of pride on my mother and my father's face. They we were in the VFW that has a bar, and they were like running up and down a bar, and like they were like the life of the party. It, it was like it was like the pinnacle, the pinnacle of uh, my Navy career. But I'll never forget. My mother pulled me aside, and she said, "Jimmy, you got one year of service left. What are you going to do?" And I said, "Mom, you know I'm." looking to get married, looking to start a family. Submarine life isn't about that. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, right. Um, everything you heard about sailors and ports is true. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh we, uh, so she pulled me aside. She said, what are you going to do? I said, Mom, I, I'm not sure, um, but I think I want to uh, come home. She said, baby, come home and do the work. And mm-hmm. that's the phrase that sticks with me even mm-hmm. to this day. Come home and do the work. And unfortunately, about a month later, my mother wound up passing away. So she was 49 years old and she had a massive heart attack. Um, But those words um, ring true to me to this day. And it's the reason why I try to do so much for my hometown and for my city and to to come back and and be part of the community. Mom told me to come home and do work. It took me a while to get here, but um, I'm here and I'm ready to do the work. All right, let's pause. Let's let that breathe, too. (laughs) Let's let that breathe. Moment of silence. Rest in peace for Barbara. Sorry to hear that, man, but I'm glad she was such an influential part in your life.